You're listening to Ottawa Morning on CBC Radio 1. I'm Robin Bresnahan. Why aren't more Canadians with disabilities working? Well, that's the question a new task force will be examining. Here's Human Resources Minister Diane Finley with the announcement yesterday. Close to 17% of Canadian adults report having a disability. And we know that, unfortunately, Canadians with disabilities are less likely to participate in the labour force. In fact, the overall participation rate for working age adults with disabilities is just under 60% compared with other working age Canadians who are at 80%. That's a statistic that has to change and that we want to help change. I'm very pleased to announce today a new panel specifically designed to address labour market participation by persons with disabilities throughout Canada. That was Human Resources Minister Diane Finley speaking yesterday. Well, Keenan Weller is the head of Live Work Play, which is a charity that helps people in this area with intellectual disabilities. He's in the studio with me this morning. Good morning, Keenan. Good morning, Robin. Uh, so um, we're hearing there from Diane Finley. It's a statistic that has to change. How yeah. does it change? Well, I think it's uh, two things, and I think both were discussed uh, with the announcement of the panel, which is uh, we do need a legislative and regulatory component, uh, but on the other hand, we need an attitudinal change, which comes from awareness um, and uh, the willingness, obviously, in the end, of employers to hire people with intellectual disabilities and other types of disabilities. And do you think that that's not there right now, that attitude? I don't think there's a broad awareness amongst uh, employers, first of all, the different types of uh, disabilities and accommodations and barriers that are out there. Um, but there's a lot of work to do for sure, and it's actually a worldwide phenomenon. If you, There was a report from the uh, World Health Organization last year, and it's actually pretty much across the planet. It's about 15% of people have a disability in, in different countries, and uh, the unemployment figures are very high for people with disabilities. We're talking in big brush strokes here at the moment. Sometimes people connect better with an example when we can put a human face on this. Can you give me an example of somebody here in this area that you think could be working but is not? Well, there's an awful lot of people, but uh, how about an example of someone that was successful? I mean, we've worked with people who have been told throughout their life, uh, you know, employment's probably not going to be for you. It's not going to happen for you. Um, but uh, there's a person that's uh, had a very public uh, story through uh, the Works Gourmet Burger Bistro here in Ottawa, Melissa Cunningham, who uh, is now a permanent worker um, at the location in Orleans and is actually a perfect fit there. The, her employer is extremely happy with her and she's extremely happy with her workplace. And it was because uh, they were willing to give a chance to someone who communicates a bit differently um, and benefited from a different type of training. And uh, now she's a dedicated loyal uh, member of that community, that workplace. And so she has a intellectual rather than a physical disability? That's correct, yes. Sometimes, well, I don't know, you're, you're the expert on this. Is that harder in a way that when people have an intellectual disability because it's something that you can't see? I think that it's different and that's one of the things I'm hoping this new panel will address that, you know, it is very broad like you said and the accommodations required. I think we're uh, there's a fair bit of awareness around if, if someone uses a wheelchair, the kind of things that need to be done. Uh, there's a different type of awareness around what if a person communicates differently, can't process the written word very well, or can't process verbal instructions very well. So that's a different type of help and support. And I think uh, employers are very willing, but a lot of them, are, they just don't know how they would do it. Hmm. And this is part of your job, right? I mean, you work with lots of businesses to make the pitch um, to convince them to hire people with intellectual disabilities. How do you do that? Well, actually, we started working with uh, local rotary groups, for example, and we found a, a willing audience, basically, of employers who just say, I don't really know how to do this, but if someone will help me, sure, I'll, I mean, I'll give someone a chance. Um, so I think that's the starting point, is you find uh, the kind of the audience that is excited and willing to do this and just looking for uh, the right support. And you can't get uh, too upset you know there's thousands and thousands of employers in Ottawa and if not every one of them is ready to jump at this well let's start with the ones that are ready and that's where the attitude shift will come from when they speak to their peers about the many advantages of uh, having a diverse workplace. Do you have faith that this task force set up by Human Resources uh, Minister Diane Finley will it achieve this? 
I think it has good potential to achieve uh, the type of awareness we're looking for. Something similar was done in uh, the United Kingdom with great success. They actually started that in the 80s, um, and they've shown uh, some significant progress. So I look at who's on the panel as well, people like Mark Wafer, who has employed lots and lots of people with different types of disabilities at Tim Hortons across Ontario. So, I mean, they're speaking to people who know what they're doing. Uh, so just, you know, I guess ultimately we're all waiting to see what's done with the information once it comes out. This isn't a new issue. I mean, people with intellectual and, and physical disabilities, they've been around for a very long time. I'm, I'm struggling to see here, what's changing? Well, I think there's a, a number of things. First of all, a lot of people we support, uh, there's been a shift over the past couple of decades where they might have been bound for an institution or uh, segregated uh, place in the community. And now more and more, they are looking to come out of high school and join their community as workers um, and as full participants in society. So first of all, there's a greater demand um, for work uh, and, and awareness is going up. And it's also an economic reality that, uh, you know, just having a place to live, it's awfully difficult if you don't have employment. So uh, there's people looking for their own homes in the community and to afford them, they need income. How much accommodation is fair to ask of an employer, would you say? Well, uh, from what our experience, uh, the costs of uh, accommodating a person with disability are actually really low, and the benefits of having a workplace that includes people are really high. So it's not been an issue for those that uh, embrace it, and it tends to be more a perceived barrier that the cost of accommodation is going to be high. And in fact, if you speak to some of the employers that we've worked with, they will identify, because of this, we identified a number of issues in our workplace where we were not communicating well with all of our employees, and through hiring and, and uh, exploring how to accommodate a person with a disability, we found out there was a number of things we could improve and have a better workplace. If uh, Were you involved at all in, in this uh, task force with uh, the Human Resources Minister? I was uh, invited uh, to the announcement and was aware that they were working on it uh, because some of the people that we work with Ontario-wide, like um, at the Ontario Disability Employment Network, um, have been looking for uh, this kind of input and federal involvement. So uh, I was aware it was coming, but I didn't contribute much myself. And if you give them a, a score out of, of 10 on, on how do you think they're doing, if are they going in the right direction? What score would you give them? I like the language and values that were presented around uh, why they're doing this and what they're hoping to achieve. So I'd give that a very high score. And uh, I guess, again, it's just what will happen with the information when it comes out. That's what it's all about. Action, not just words. Correct. All right. Thanks very much, Keenan, for coming into the studio. Uh, That's Keenan Weller. He heads up Live, Work, Play, and it's a charity that advocates on behalf of people with intellectual disabilities.